Love Line is meant for an adult audience. Love Line may contain sexually oriented content. Listener discretion is advised. Oh, oh, now here's Love Line. With R- R- Ricky, Ricky Rackman, uh, Dr. Drew, and Adam Carolla. The first show of 1996. Welcome to the show that is called Loveline. The show that five nights a week we take your calls live regarding love, regarding relationships, regarding sex, or why it itches, scratches, burns, and drips. You call us at 1-800-LOVE-191, which is 1-800-568-3191, or you fax us at area code 310-854-4455. There we go. Right? I'm New Ricky year. Rackman. With Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew is a board-certified internist and addiction medicine specialist. And it is 1996, first show of 96. Last night was a repeat, you know. You know, if we don't screw this show up, though, we're on a roll. You know what I mean? Because I mean, we were on tape the last two nights? Well, no, I'm saying this is the first show oh, I see. of 96. I see. Yeah, so, first of a series. Right, so what I'm saying is... is, is we can go all the way through the year without having even a bad call. Oh, yeah. Right now, we're free and clear. Right now, 96 has been just awesome. It's awesome. Lovely. Flawless. Lovely. We haven't made it's a mistake. Awesome <laughs> and, and I'll tell you, 95. And I, don't, I want to talk a little bit about the whole New Year's Eve thing for a little bit. And I want to talk to you guys you know, about it also. But 95, you know, we, we were getting ready to do the uh, last show, last live show of 95. And I'm like, man, it's just going to rule. And, I'm gonna, and just the calls, just people were just like on lewds. And yeah. it was just getting lame. And I'm just like, and that summed up 95. Really? In sense. And, oh, first I have to welcome Anilo, our producer, back. That was the problem. Ann wasn't here. Exactly. Yeah. Who's bummed out. Because of the Chargers. Oh. She's the biggest San Diego Charger fan. Yeah. And I, we know I could give a rat's ass about football, but I saw, like, they got, like, the lightning bolts on their helmets. Right. So I was watching it and going, well, this is this depends whether Ann is going to be in a good mood for, you know, the next month. And they lost. But she's still in an okay mood. Yeah, she's out of her misery. She knows if if not this weekend, then next weekend or the one after that. And I think, no, I, they're I think out. she knows. They're out, period. Well, that's what I'm saying. It, it was inevitable. Right. Huh. Let's oh. let's not torture the poor girl. Let's just have the tar- Chargers fold now. Excuse me? And that way she can, she can live her life until next year. All right. Oh, she was going to say something. Do you want to say something, Ann? No, I'll pass on that. <laughs> she knows I'm right. But no, me, you're not. T- tell me if this happens. Hey, we went to the Super Bowl last year, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, you guys did show up. That's right. <laughs> sure. ESPN, too, had 30 hours of stock car racing, so I was set for New Year's. But let me ask you this. When it's 96, at, at a new year, does everybody start a New Year's Eve like saying, man, this New Year's is going to be good because the last one was crappy? Or was it just seem like what most people said this year? Or do you think that happens every New Year's? Saying that the previous year was crappy? Oh, God, this year better be good because 95 sure sucked. Uh, I, I don't know. For me, it's always a personal letdown for this year. So this year I decided it would suck well in advance. <laughs> and then when it sucked, I, I was okay with that because I sort of predicted it, it. It went up to your expectations. That's right, which was nil. And Dr. Drew, what would you do New Year's Eve? Uh, went to bed at 7 o'clock in the evening. Got our kids to sleep. We, we got up and see oh, the parade. come on. We, I, you didn't parents, go outside and start firing guns and stuff. No, no. My parents live on the, the give all the oh, kids. Well, first of all, my, my parents live on the Rose Parade route, so I got to get up at like five o'clock in the morning, get three or three three year old kids out there, and they had a good time. But it was windier than hell that night. I don't know if you people around the country where we had these windstorms that night. And we live way up on one of the hillsides here, and if when winds hit, that's when the fires kind of sweep through those hillsides, and it was a scary night for us. We yeah, yeah, the people on the East Coast are feeling really bad. Yeah, it, it dropped like to 60 this weekend. You know, it <laughs> yeah, was well, really Well, bad. no, but wait a minute, Ricky. Let's be fair. If the wind chill factor was in the high 50s. <laughs> that's true. I had to put on a parka. But, so did you, you didn't even do the countdown? No. Sleep. No countdown. Slept. No. What about you, Adam? Uh, you did. I went to some. You brought it in with some jugs. Yes, I did. Yeah. I did. I rang in the new year with All a big right. set of jugs. Right. Thank you very much. Where were you? I was at a really crappy club in Studio City just dying to leave. Is it, is it one of those things that you're always... I mean, how many times have you spent bringing in the new year in like a cab or trying to be... Because let me tell you something, okay? I went up to Snow Summit this New Year's Eve. There was no snow in Taos, so I said, forget it. We're going to go to Snow Summit, which is like... A, which is a, I'll tell you, if it doesn't snow soon, California's in some big trouble. But I decided to spend a couple days at Snow Summit. It's 11.30, okay, and I'm in the bar at the, at, the, at the ski resort, the lodge, okay? The people that are at lodges at the bars at night are the people that usually live around the ski resorts. Right. So aren't necessarily used to somebody with a leopard suit. I had a killer leopard suit. 
bright red hair. Okay? Raggedy Andy easy. hair, yeah. I know, kid, the little kids were going, I'm going, will you make me a balloon animal? They thought I was both. Oh, or something. they didn't try to beat you up or anything? Huh? <laughs> and they did that. So I'm deciding I'm going to leave, right? So at like a quarter to, I go to this guy's house that I know lives down the street, and he's there with a couple. So at like 10 till, we're just driving, and I spent it like in our cabin with like four people. That's right. Bringing the New Year's, watching I thought TV. I thought people were a little bit anxious about the upcoming year. I didn't, I didn't hear, I didn't see a lot of year-end reviews. Mostly, you know, the last two days of the year are just packed with year-end reviews. Reviews of you know the people that died in '95 and all the great or bad things that happened in '95. A lot of things happened in '95. Well, a lot are, of bad stuff. I think people are sort of getting over the whole thing. I mean, like in the old days, it was like balloons falling, champagne toasting. You know, I picked the 80s, everyone the in days. gowns, the old no, 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 tuxedos. I watched, and, I watched TV of what they did in Vegas, and I think I got to go to. I've never been to Vegas for New yeah. Year's, and I think. I'm gonna do it. But you know what we'll, we'll talk about tonight? Did you have like something great or really crappy that you were at at the countdown? If you've got any different types of resolutions, and, and yes, we are going to talk about love because it is love line, but any kind of resolutions that you're going to make that might be like, I don't care if it, I'm going to lose five pounds. I don't really care about that because I, I, I know you ain't. I got to say something that was kind of funny. I, I did get sex that night about two in the morning, and the girl says, uh, well, look at you. You're, you know, we're two hours into 96 and you already got laid. And I said, yeah, because usually I got to wait till like April. <laughs> so, and what, what are you making the motion? You boned down for 96 too? Yeah, I got it around 2 o'clock. Yeah, I know. Right. I boned, oh, I, I boned do in. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Oh, that was you. That was me. <laughs> I should have let you up from the pillow. Uh, oh, uh, right on. So the number is 1-800-LOVE-191. <laughs> Maybe we'll talk about what we've got predictions for 96, talk to you about it. And, of course, we're going to talk about love. You know, it's the starting of a new year. You're in a crappy relationship. Get over it. Get out. It's a new year. It's time to wash the clothes. Get it over with, okay? But right now, let's talk to Melissa calling from Porterville. First call of 96. Melissa, it is about? Um, I caught my brother masturbating. So? What exactly happened? Well, um, uh, his room was um, cracked open. Right. And... I started to walk in, and there he was. Was he watching a video or holding a magazine? <laughs> no, he was just—he was like on the floor. What did you do? I just like freaked and like got all embarrassed and took off. He knows that you saw him. Huh? I don't know. So you don't know if he even knows. No. Does he, have you talked to him since? Um, just like a little bit, but I haven't said much. Cause did he seem okay? Well, you mean yeah. while he was doing it? No, since he's spoken <laughs> he, to her. He seemed great while he was doing it. <laughs> How old is he? He's 23. Well, that's a little weird, an older brother. You know, I was sort of expecting like 15 She's or something 17. like that. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying, when she was saying I caught my brother masturbating, I was picturing like some 14-year-old guy in the toilet or right. something. He's 23. But you must know that he does this, don't you? Well, I mean, he could have at least shut the door. I mean, yep. I don't know what to do. Right. Your brother's okay otherwise? Does he have any other word? Well, I don't I don't know. Tell me, what do you think? Well, I don't know. What? He's just, he's like a little weird. In what way? Um, like, he seems like to act immature. Well, he's 23, he's living at home. I mean, that's a little old, isn't it? Oh, well, yeah. It's tough out there. She lives well, in Porterville. There aren't that many jobs. Give us, give me an example of some of the immature things he's done. Oh, we're really digging. She caught the guy jerking off. Big deal. I don't think he wanted to get caught. He should have closed the door. I mean, what, 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 what do you think? There's something not weird because she happened to catch him jerking it's off. Just, it's just maybe not, but it's just the whole situation's a do, little. Do you guys bit... share a room? <laughs> no. No. All right, but but I do agree with Drew. She's saying this guy's something's weird. Not, There's yes. more here. Yeah, There's more than right. uh, meets not. meets the She's eye. She's a little sister. All sisters think. No, something's up. Weird. I think this guy may have like you, molested Mr. her Pro- or something. Oh my god! No. I think he did something you to her. You were the biggest advocate of masturbating twenty four seven. That was ninety five. Oh, ninety because you got sex in ninety six. <laughs> you got boned in ninety six, and all of a sudden he's not the J O King. That's right. Oh god! Now, you, even I won't go that far uh, on this call, Melissa, but. But uh, I, I'm just curious to what you might be thinking or what, what you might have been told, perhaps, is, is, quote, weird about him. Well, I'm kind of scared. I mean, I don't, I don't know. It's just like, I don't know, because, I mean, why would he, like, I don't know. I'm just scared, because why do you leave the door open? Well, right. how, you said it was, like, cracked okay. open. Right. What are you afraid of? Well, I don't know. It's just. You're afraid he's going to come after you in some way? 
Well, yeah. I'm just afraid he wanted me to see him. Okay. All right, but but isn't that based on something? I mean, not necessarily. I mean, it just it just it's something something's not right with the, the behavior. Something's not right with the boundaries. And it's not based on anything from the past. Well, I'm not, not saying not he molested her. I'm just saying I think, I think she's mo- got weird feelings about well, this wait, wait, wait. guy. How open was the door? Was the door open more than two inches? Yeah. So was it open? So do you think he wanted to get caught? I really don't know. All right, here I here's the not. big question, Melissa. Has oh. he ever done anything in the past that made you feel weird? Yeah. Like, like what? what? Um, just like when we were playing around. What would he do? Um, like, um, I don't know, just like the way he'd hug me. All right, so see what I'm getting at? Yeah, There's yeah. something weird. She feels so, weird. So She's at spooked. The, at the very least, what you're picking up on is that he doesn't respect the usual boundaries that exist between family members. He's well, he's my like stepbrother. All right. All right. She thinks yeah. this guy's yeah. hot for her yeah. and she's right. reluctant to say yeah. anything. I you've got do you have another older sibling or anything like that? Uh no. Uh, do you have any an aunt or an uncle, anybody else you could talk to? Well maybe. A I cousin? don't know. I'm just kinda scared y- to you need to tell an adult about your feelings here because and you should first of all never be alone with this guy. Okay. I know. It's, Just don't ever be alone with him. And then you should try to tell somebody. I know it might be a little tough to tell your parents because they, they might become resentful. They might try to blame you. Who knows what their reaction will be. But try to tell, tell an, an, another adult, objective family member who can who can help you, protect you, and maybe they can get the message to your parents. And he needs to know someone's kind of watching. Yeah. So yeah. It, will, it will squelch any yeah. plans it, he might right. have of checking you out in the shower or doing another masturbation episode or right. something like that. And do not be afraid to, uh, to, well, to tell the guy off. I don't think I could tell my dad, though. Cause I'm not saying tell your dad yet. I'm saying tell somebody else in the family. And who, what are they going to tell somebody? That she caught him jerking off or that, no. that he's touching? I mean, that, is that he, he touching you weird? Huh? Is he touching you weird? Not now. But he, but is, he has he has in the past. Well, kind of, yeah. How yeah. kind of? What do you mean? Just like the way he'd hug me or something. Okay. It just makes her feel... She's the bound, getting the a boundaries, creepy vibe the off of The boundaries aren't guy. being respected, and I agree with her, and she should be very careful. Okay, Melissa? Uh. Yeah, hey. Hey. Is it is it bad for my dad to walk around in his underwear? No, that would be normal, okay? Okay, then. All right, good luck. Bye. But she, she, n- not with a boner, right? Not, no, no, preferably without that. Okay. okay. okay you see, you guys yelled at me, but I was on to yeah, something yeah, yeah, yeah. Ricky's he might, yelling. He might be wearing, like, Rick, thong. Ricky's like yelling. G-string, like Ricky's leopard yelling. G-string with his big old... Ricky's yelling at you because you sounded too much like me. I know. That just oh, that scares me when you sound This is 96. Like it's Drew in stereo now. <laughs> all of a sudden, Adam had sex once, and yes. now all of a sudden, he's not jerking off, and everybody's a pervert. But I know I've got some I like in 96. Jer- I like you better as a jerking off pervert. <laughs> well, no, all right. I'll go home just for you tonight, Ricky. Okay. Early. Ah! 1-800-LOVE-191 is the number. Right now, we're going to talk to John, who's calling from L.A. John. Hi. Happy New Year's, bro. Yeah. Did you have a good New Year's Eve? Uh, yeah, pretty lame, actually. What'd you, how'd you bring in the new year? At a friend's house. Doing what? Drinking. Much, watching TV. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! What we, a hoot. Did we, you guys watch the thing with what? the girl from Extra we had on the show the other night? No, I, no. I didn't see that. It was actually a guy, and I'm not gay. Because you watch a guy on TV? No, no, he didn't hear what we said. The, the, you know, you know the girl we had over here from Extra, Arthel Neville. Arthel, yeah, and she she had her own uh, show that night. Yeah, uh, I didn't see it, but I did see Wayne Newton singing "Gangsta's Paradise." Did you guys see that? No, no, I'm dead serious. Wayne, Wayne Newton Newton's doing "Gangsta Paradise." Yes, he did it on I don't know what channel it was eleven or what. It it, 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 it was. <laughs> It was just worse than you could ever imagine. I don't know if it was for comedy or not, but he sung that song. <laughs> Wayne Newton in a bad tuxedo, looking more like Wayne Newton than Wayne's ever looked in the past, wow. singing Coolio. Oh, God. That's it punk. Was, it was awesome. I think we were on with Coolio last night, by the way. We were. Yeah. Yeah. So, John, were you molested, too? <laughs> no. What's up, John? Would you, would you, would you like to What be? can we do for you? Uh, I had a question. Yeah. I have this irregular mole on my penis. Irregular mole. Like a dark mole? Yeah. All right. And how long has it been there? About three weeks. It just appeared? Yeah. You oh. it. Do you shower? Yeah. Okay. Can moles just appear? Not I thought you kind of no. had to have them. Yeah, and they don't typically come out of nowhere over in three weeks. Yeah, but I don't think... I, I think it was there, but I just didn't notice it. I see. Okay. And um, I would go to my dermatologist, but she is a family friend. And that would kind of be um, yeah. weird. Then yeah. you get a discount. Then go to another dermatologist. Uh-huh. Wait another a minute. what? Dermatologist. Do you think it could be cancerous? 
Well, actually, th- there is such a thing, but I, I doubt it, okay? But the fact that you're telling me something dark appeared rapidly uh, anywhere in your body, that, that makes me concerned. I mean, somebody who's trained properly doesn't necessarily have to be a dermatologist, but preferably it should be, needs to look at that. The doctor needs to take a look at that. Okay. Okay? Thank you. All right, good you know they You know what the dermatologist should have? What? No, seriously, this is another yeah, invention, yeah. but uh, this is a good I'm, idea. I am holding Ricky, my breath. Ricky will be on board with this. A big flat screen with a hole in it. And you just press up whatever part right. the skin is having trouble in. If it's your scrotum, your penis, whatever part it is, if you could just put it up against the hole, yeah. they wouldn't have to fondle the junk yeah, But right. isn't that, that part of the fun? It is for me, but apparently John was a little reluctant. Because <laughs> it's a family friend, you know. Getting the courtesy reach-arounds from, you know, <laughs> mom's best friend is, isn't the same. Let's speak with Angela, who's calling from Chicago. Angela! Hi. Happy 96. Oh, thank you. How are you guys? We're well. good. Oh, that's good to hear. Did you, did, you, did you feel real bad for us when we were telling you, you know, you dropped down to the 50s New Year's Eve here? Oh, hell no. You know how, what? How cold is it in Chicago oh, right now? Cold. It's snowing now, isn't it? It's like in the teens. Is it snowing it now? It's like almost like 80s. really windy, though. so you get the nip freeze going on. You get the nip freeze? Oh, yeah. Do you have big n- nip freeze? <laughs> Hey, did you guys see the I'm Playboy? There, yeah. Did you see the Playboy with Farrah Fawcett? Yeah, Sorry, that girl's got the biggest, longest nipples I've ever seen in the world. Looks like a tootsie roll on the edge of her breast. I, don't I have, like big nipples. I just have big boobs. <laughs> oh, I really? hate that. What size? Seriously. I've got um, a 38 double D. Wow. And then it goes to E after double D, I believe. There's no triple D. <laughs> There's just no, duh, duh. A, B, C, D, D, E. Well, it makes sense. It's D and D. Double, <laughs> double D, and then it goes to E. And then after that, who cares? <laughs> You know what? It may be not, it's a little cold in here, though, tonight. Why? Your nipples? Do you have nipple freeze, Drew? <laughs> and uh, Anne, do you have nipple freeze? Oh, no, it's no, no. It's going to get hot if you tell her to mess uh, with the thermostat. Just keep Angela on. I'm getting sweaty. What's up, girl? Okay. This isn't so much like a problem really that. It's just a question that I have. I, myself, I'm like 19 now, and I am unbelievably orgasmic. I don't know why. I don't know if it's something I've ever done because I'm a virgin as of yet. But I just, I mean, to the point where I'll be sitting in the car, I will be just walking down the street, and I will just wig, I'm telling you, and I don't know why. <laughs> I honestly thought all girls were like this up until like a couple of months ago. I'd be talking to my friends, and I'd be telling them about how I am, and they're like, what the hell is up with you? What do you, you, know? what, what do you tell your friends, Angela? Well, I'd be telling them, like, we'd be talking about, you know, guys and stuff like that, and I'd tell them, you know, I'm still a virgin. And they're like, well, what the hell do you do? And I was like, I was like, well, I don't know. I just, I'd be telling you know. No, the no, Angela, was, Angela. Huh? No, I don't know. You just what? What do you mean what? You tell your friends you just what? I have orgasms all the time. How? I mean by pl- I by a, by satisfying I, yourself or by like riding well, a bicycle downstairs. Too, just, I usually just do that at night, but like I'll be I'll be just sitting there and literally I mean I just I mean I don't know why it happens or for what reason or whatever, but so, I, I mean, you could be operating a potter's wheel, making an ashtray exactly. out of clay, and have an orgasm without yes. touching yourself. Yes. You know, I got a theory, guys. <laughs> Here's the theory: some women have like three women's worth of sex in them, and others have none. You know, that, what I mean? like, does this have something to do with your sex during '96? Yeah, it was a whole epiphany I had <laughs> during a two o'clock on a Monday night, but the, Sunday night, I guess it was. But the the deal is, is some women just they can't have an orgasm; they don't feel anything; it's yeah. nothing. And then some women My are just exploding like, what, all the time. Like what Angela? My sister's like that. She she has never had an orgasm. She's like two years old. You took her sex. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> You gobbled up all her libido. So it's so easy for you to orgasm. You could orgasm talking on the phone on a radio show. (laughs) Actually, don't laugh. I have. Drew, I'm sorry, babe, but you have got a nice voice. Yeah! (laughs) (laughs) Woo! (laughs) You should see him, too, Angela. Seriously? He's got nipple nipple freeze right now. (laughs) He's not some little nebbish guy with the stethoscope swinging around in in, in a bunch of pocket line or anything like that. He's a big hunkin' doctor. But, I mean, seriously, though, I just wanted to know why. I mean, is there any specific reason why I'm like this? I mean, honestly. Well, what, now, what do you mean by why? You're I mean, doing it to her, Jew. No, no, no. She wants you to answer it. Is it something psychological? What is it? it it's, it's a confluence of all those things. I mean, you have, it's, it's the anatomy that you have. It's the... Ricky, cut it out. Ricky. <laughs> it's your what voice, you doing? <laughs> Look, it's, it's, it's the fact that you're psychologically open to these sorts of things, that you're not, you're not inhibited in any way. 
and that uh, you know you're sort of neurologically wired for this to happen you, you, in <laughs> some women are that way is there any way i can like stop it because i mean sometimes it's like embarrassing i mean <laughs> I, i've been sitting in class a couple of times when i just wig out in glass. <laughs> I don't know why. I got to tell you truthfully, Angela, you know, it's been really hot out here in L.A. the last few days, and Drew was saying he'd uh, spent uh, some of the weekend doing a little home improvement work. He was up <laughs> on the roof there. He said it was so hot they had to take his shirt off <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, and he rub a little his oil down on from himself. the sweat that was glistening off his forehead, right? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Oh, honey, don't take me there. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Angela? Yes, dear. Thank you for cheering up our 96. Oh, thank you. Love, 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 look, you go ahead. Love line, it will be right. Love line, love will be, line, she's love, love, sorry, but we don't have that kind of time. Love line will be right back. Hey, we said that. Yeah, you did. Nineteen ninety six. The show's called Love Line. One eight hundred Love One Nine One is the number. That's five six eight thirty one ninety one. Fax us at eight at three one zero. Why can't? That's my New Year's resolution. Eight five four. The friggin' fax machine number. Forty four fifty five. Three one zero. That'll be the, that'll be the only New Year's resolution that I'm going to make. Did you make any, Drew? No, I don't like New Year's resolution. And for, and for some reason, I too am anxious about ninety six. I don't know what it is. I, don't know. I am. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm going to I mean, I I don't know if it sounds really superficial, but I'm just I want to work my ass off, and I just want to. This is going to be a different year. I think '96 is just going to be. I'm going to be less tolerant to other races. <laughs> <laughs> Can you? Well, you see, I'm doing a reverse psychology type of resolution thing this year, like <laughs> smoke more. Right. I vowed to eat more fudge. I'm going to drink more, and I'm going to gamble more, and then I figure. I'll Either end up way doing you less. Win. Yeah, because usually I vow to not do something or do something less. I end up doing it more, so I'm going the reverse psychology route. I know myself this year. You know yourself this year. I'm going to read some email right now uh, from Lugendulge. That's what it says. I don't know how to pronounce it. That's what their email word is. Can you please tell me what exactly is ecstasy and what are its effects on you? Is it addictive? One thing I want to say before you answer, Drew, <laughs> just to cut you off when you went, but I'm going to cut you off real quick. Yeah. You know they had ecstasy, which was MDMA a while ago. Right. And then they stopped making it or something, and then they made herbal ecstasy. Right. And now herbal ecstasy is called ecstasy. No. Yes. No. Ecstasy is ecstasy. No, but or no, herbal ecstasy sold at the stores is or yeah, sold at your that may be, coffee houses is now called ecstasy. That may it's be not called herbal ecstasy. That's anymore. fine. That, that that's ginseng basically. Ecstasy, the, the the illicit chemical ecstasy is a amphetamine that's been altered in such a way as to give it hallucinogenic properties. It's a very dangerous drug. There's there's been ample evidence that this drug does in fact cause brain damage, and it does it in a part of the brain that's very important for maintaining your mood. It's called the amygdala, and it's also a very important reinforcement center, learning center. And in animals, laboratory animals, when they give them even modest doses of, of MDMA, which is ecstasy, they get disruption of the normal architecture of that region. And what I see in people that do a lot of MDMA, a lot of ecstasy, is they get chronic mood disturbances when they're using it. They get extremely paranoid, and yes, it is potentially. Are you talking addictive. about me? It is potentially addictive. You mean that about me? Because it's an amphetamine, but primarily the people who are doing MDMA are other amphetamine addicts, and they just sort of sprinkle in the MDMA between the amphetamine uses. Hey, is ecstasy speedy? Oh yeah, yeah it's yeah. a speed. It's speed. It's oh amphetamine. okay, all right. Let's talk to Nathan. Nathan. Hey, how you guys doing? Hi, Nathan. Good. 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 Where, where were you at New Year's Eve? Where was I New Year's yeah, Eve? Yeah, tell, tell me a good story. Good story. I was over at a bunch of my friends' house and just women all around. That was a good story You're for so me. You're so full of crap. Did you hook up? <laughs> What's that? Did you hook up? Uh, yes, I did. You did? Did That's... you know her before then? What's that? Was it like a long-time girl or just um, a new thing? A couple months. Oh, couple was that the, was the first time you guys ever did it? Yeah. Does this have, oh, something, right to do with, does this have something to do with your call? Oh, well, I have two questions with my call. The first question is... Um, what we're doing is I'm about to uh, have sex again, I guess you could say, and Twice all we have is con- wow. safe sex. Um, but all we have is condoms that were from the car, 
and they were frozen all winter. Oh. I'm wondering if they will still be safe. No, I would suggest you. <laughs> yeah, I would suggest you use something else. It, it, if too, you start to stretch it out and it shatters, that's not a good thing. Yeah, right? I don't. It I'm, looks good though. In, in Could this, you imagine yeah, yeah. having one just explode like the like T2? Remember that movie? You're putting a comp. Sorry, baby, it blew up on me. Wouldn't she be scared though? I would think that. The tear me up. In this part of the country, we worry about the heat exposure of the condom, and one to two weeks in a glove compartment or in a, a hot trunk of a car would certainly do a way with the effectiveness of the condom. I would imagine any exposure to freezing temperature would screw up a condom's uh, uh, efficacy. Uh, Nathan, wait a minute. i got a few questions. First all of right. all, you're not looking real smooth forging through the trunk for a condom. It's, uh, it should yes, be by, he is. Right yes, by the is. scissor jack under no. the space-saving spare. Wait a minute. Here it is. Ah, oh, yeah. And number two, how crowded is your glove box <laughs> that you can't put a condom in the glove box? It's crowded. It's How much stuff true. do you have in your glove box that you cannot squeeze one condom into your glove box? Well, I, I guess I would have room for it, but it ended up in the trunk. I bought them and threw them in the trunk because I wasn't getting any for so long. You know, I just figured, fuck yeah. it. And, and Nathan, if you're like me, you think you jinx yourself if you, like, carried around with you. Well, usually his dates, he ends up putting the bodies in the trunk. So that's oh, so it works out. Oh, yeah. Right. No, it's very Nathan, convenient. it's what, one in the morning there? Well, I'm usually a necrophiliac, and this is Nathan. Thing for Dude, you don't Nathan. have to use condoms in necrophiliacs. Forget it. Well, it's one o'clock there, right? Yeah. There must be a pharmacy or grocery store open. Not too. Oh, you're going to bone down right now? Yeah. Well, Where's the girl? She's right next to me. Put her on Put the her phone. Put her on. Put her on the phone. Okay, yeah. here she is. It's going to be new. Hi. Hello. Hey, what's your name? Jenny. 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 Uh, Jenny. Jenny. You know you're on the radio right now? I am, great. Did you know what Nathan called us about? No, I was in the other room. Oh, really? Yeah. So how long have you known this Nathan guy? Um, I've known him for a while. Yeah? Yeah. He okay. said he had warts. He no, said that's he has not what? That's not true. <laughs> okay, hold on. You ever had sex with Nathan before? No, I haven't. Were you going to plan on ever having sex with Nathan? Uh, tonight. Okay, listen. Don't do it. He will don't respect you more if you don't do it. Ugh. Why? Shush. I don't know. He said, he, don't do it until like when, Adam? We're setting a date? February? The, the weekend. Yeah. The week, the wait, wait till the thaw. Wait till when? Wait till the lake and streams start running again. <laughs> wait, wait till spring. Wait till the salmon run. Okay. No, it's right. Because you, of the warts, right? Hey, well, they, they, here, here, well, Jenny, here's one thing we did call about. It was about the, the effectiveness of condoms that have been stuck in his his, his trunk for several days. <laughs> oh, now you're blown. No, look. And I, I, think, well, I think you ought to be aware that there's that a body in his trunk. Before you there's have a sex. body in his trunk. No, that you ought to be aware that he needs to go out and purchase some condoms before you guys have sex tonight. So just send him out. Well, that's going to make cold. her think really good of it. Hey, he needs to do that. And, He's uh, a virgin, you know. Who is? Nathan. He is? Yeah. you got to be know. gentle with him. No, he isn't. He also likes things stuck in his rear. Oh, I heard that about him. Yeah, you did, didn't you? <laughs> yes, I did. Big thing. And listen, he doesn't like you to ask either. Here's what I want you to do. Okay. When Nathan's out doing oh, 125 down the interstate, getting over to the Circle K to get some condoms. Okay. A M A and P. A A and P. I want you to. I want you to go into the bathroom. I want you to go to the cupboard underneath the sink, and I want you to open that up. And I want you to forge around a little and see what kind of magazines you find. And then I want wow. you to slide the bottom drawer next to the nightstand. You know, the nightstand bottom drawer open? Yeah. See if you see anything rolling around in there. Any literature, any handcuffs, anything that takes vibrator, any, <laughs> anything that takes batteries, I should say. And just give the place a thorough casing yeah. before he comes back. And then whatever you find, put it all in the middle of the comforter. Yeah. And remember, grab something to stick in his rear. Put, now put Nathan on the phone real quick, okay? Okay, here you go. Okay. How are you doing? Hey, Nathan, don't worry. You're dialed in. Okay, bro? Dialed in? Yeah, yeah. just go go to the store, get some condoms, and uh, be real romantic because she's All in right, that I stuff. All right, I will. Okay? And maybe pick up some fruit while you're at the Circle K because I think she wants some fruit. Some bananas and stuff? Yeah. Bring, bring a banana. Hey, there you go. go. Yeah, go grab a banana and say, hey, honey, I thought you might want to use this. Gentlemen. Okay? Biggest, brownest one you can find, Nathan. Are we Nathan, done? happy new year. Hey, you, happy new year to you, too. Yeah, give us a call tomorrow, okay? All right. I feel good already. I feel good about 96. It's a banner year. A banner year. And we haven't screwed the show up yet. What? Yeah. You well, know what I mean? On, you've only been on the year 32. But minutes. all I'm saying is if we can go in with this goal before every show not to screw it up, we might be able to make it all the way through the year without a bad call. You know, I want to read a fact somebody was asking. Somebody wrote down about some of the favorite shows of 1995. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is from – this is actually somebody that's starting a little love line – mailing list and wow. she sends like and it's a listener mm-hmm. and her email address is I hope she doesn't mind me giving it out is N O L V C H E R U B. 
which is no love cherub. No love cherub. What does that mean? Like a no love cherub. Cherub, yeah. Oh. That's what that means. <laughs> How about that for a great explanation? Uh, some of the a, best a, a love small, line. Some what? of the, her, her, and I, I believe it's a her. Some of the best love line guests that you had in 95. Clive Barker. Yeah. Interesting views and stories told, as well as the surprising thing that he was gay. Yeah. Hagfish. And that his grandmother threatened to cut his penis off. Yes. Tell him that. What did what his grandmother say? His grandmother would not let him go into public restrooms because she convinced him that a giant, I think she said black man, was there behind the public restroom toilets to cut his penis off if he were to go in there. Really? Yeah. And then, then that, the candy man sort of came out of that image, apparently. Oh, really? Yeah. Hagfish, because, of course, they uh, tried to get the big queefing contest. Femme to Femme. People never heard that show. Femme, which actually was before 95. Gave a long, detailed uh, explanation of how to please women. Pennywise, cool guys, as well as Drew Puke. Ugh. We never did find that tape, did we? No. Tank Abbott, the show just went pretty well with a lot of laughs. The guy said he had stomach cramps. Well, now he has head cramps. She liked Carrot Top and the cast of Medicine Ball. The show got canceled, but it was cool with all the ER talk about things getting stuck in people's butts. Nice. Fantastic. I wasn't in on any of those. You were not on any of those. That should tell us something. <laughs> <laughs> Let's speak with uh, oh, Mika. Is it Mika? It's Micah. Hey, Micah. Hey, what's up? What's going on, man? Uh, I called to tell... Dude, isn't uh, that like a girl's name? It's like the name of a rock. Micah? No, yeah. uh, it's a guy's name. Guy's name? Yeah. Oh. He said, this is for Micah. What, what's up, dude? Okay, um, this happened a couple months ago. My friend was sleeping over. It was about 10 o'clock at night. And I could, and we could hear my parents upstairs having sex. Yeah. And they were really loud, and they knew we were up. I don't know why they did it. Has that ever happened before? Um, when I was here, but not when my friend was here. But so you've had... Been to... re- really horny to do it. How, how often we... does that happen that you have to hear that? What? How often does it happen that you have to hear that? Um... It depends. Sometimes I hear it like uh, once a week or so, and sometimes more or less. Hmm. Do you think they know that you're hearing this? I think so. They they could probably hear that we're up. They must have been really horny. Not no, no, I understand. But who's making the lion share the noise? Is it Ma or Dad? Um, probably my mom. All right. Well, that's healthy. Well, what's it doing? Coming through the it's coming through the vent system, right? Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, they have the central the central heating and the mm-hmm. central air. They and live in a trailer park. They live in a trailer. <laughs> uh, they have a two-story trailer? <laughs> that's living. Uh, listen, Micah, Drew's going to tell you to confront your folks. Oh, well, I, I don't know. I'm not confront them directly, but I, I'm, I'm going to say that I think what? you don't have to put up. Leave an this. anonymous note. Leave a, leave a note, or, yeah, or I, I just don't think sex while I'm still up. Well, I don't. First of all, I, I don't. I'm not convinced that they know that you're hearing all this. I don't believe they'd want to subject their kid to that, right? Because that's years of therapy. That's right. <laughs> and and I think that you have a right to to not be infringed upon in that way. That if it bugs you even at all, embarrasses you, whatever. Parents, you know, you live in this house too. Your parents should be a little more respectful of your your needs. I'll tell you what I would do, Micah. Mm-hmm. I do you have a nice stereo? Yeah. Crank it up whenever. Okay. I would good, crank man. it up, and I would pull Dad aside and say, Dad, you know, the new Pearl Jam CD sounds pretty good. How about it? And if he goes, what? You go, how about it? And he'll run to the damn music store and get it for you. And you'll have CDs for the rest of your life because every time you pull them aside and just bring up the CD and the sex thing at the same time, Dad is not going to want to let Mom find out because then Mom's going to cut him off. You'll get free. It'll be like being in that club, but you won't even have to pay the penny. <laughs> okay. All right, Micah? Yeah. All right. Poor guy. You totally lost me there, Adam. He's going to get new CDs from Dad to play in his stereo extra loud so he does not have to hear Dad having his way with Mom twice a week. Oh. Ah. That, so you have to blackmail your years folks. Of therapy to follow. Hello. 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 Love line will be right back. Welcome back to Love Line. Ricky Rackman, Adam Carolla, and Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew is a real doctor. He answers real doctor questions like this one from Randy from Chaska. Randy, you're on Love Line. Hi. Hey. How was everybody's New Year? Fantastic. 
Really? No. Man. What's your question? Oh, uh, <laughs> my question's for Dr. Drew. Yeah. Um, a couple we- about a week and a half, two weeks ago, um, me and my friends were kind of sitting around and playing a game, kind of like a twisted version of Truth or Dare. Mm-hmm. And um, I ended up having to run around outside naked, and it was pretty cold. And um, when I got, um, what happened was they thought it was pretty funny and locked me out. Oh. <laughs> and so um, I want to party with those guys. It was uh, about I was out for about three or four or five minutes, and it was really cold. When I got back in, I you know ran immediately to the shower and you know I took a hot shower for a while and everything. I mean, I was still numb in a couple spots, and one of them particularly was in my crotch area. Right. And um, now, when um, I have sex with my girlfriend and other things, I can't seem to come. I'm not sure if that's related to the cold or what it is. Frostbite. The penis has to go. Am I right, Drew? <laughs> Amputation. Yes. But but uh, when did this happen? When? How long ago was it? Right. Um, about two weeks. It was it was uh, four or five days before New Year's Eve. That would not be, be two six weeks days ago. ago. <laughs> also, it happened went to your mind too. So six days ago, and I I I I don't want to contradict what you're saying. I mean, I can. It's hard for me to understand how you could have just a mild frostbite and at this point be having significant problems with functioning. It's possible, uh, mm-hmm. and my expectation would be that it would come back. Uh, how somebody would treat that other than just waiting it out, I, I can't imagine. But if you keep having this problem, you ought to see a urologist. All right. I, I, you know, it, it sounds like you really had true mild frostbite, and it's normal for it to occur in digits and things that are far away from the body. And where the, where the I can is. only imagine how small pe- his penis got when he was out there. I mean, mine will shrivel up, you know, just getting in like a pool when it's a little cold or the ocean. Imagine being outside where it's like the wind chill factor is like 40 below. Yeah, it, May I also suggest next time he's playing Truth or Dare with his friends, take Truth. Let's talk to Dan from Pasadena. You're on Loveline. Hey, um, I have a question for Ricky. Dan. Okay, uh, well, I have this girlfriend. We've been going out for like on the upside of like two years. And I really care about her and stuff. And during those two years, we've had threesomes before. He really sounds like he cares about her, doesn't he? I, I, I like about Dan. Go ahead, Dan. And during the course of these two years, we've had threesomes before. However, it's only been with girls. You, her, and another girl. Yes. Did she do the girl? Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. my girlfriend's bisexual. Right. Now, did you have sex with the other girl, too? Yes. Okay. Okay. You but victim you. The thing, The problem that I'm having now is she's mentioned from time to time that she would like to try it with two guys. And... Mentally, I'm kind of not against this because she's done it with two girls. It seems only fair. However, I don't know if I can, like, stomach that sort of thing. Now, does that mean, does she want you to have sex with a guy? No, it kind of means that, you know... You have to do her while she's also satisfying another guy? Right. Dan, are you sure you're one of the guys? Yes, I'm. Okay. (laughs) you got to ask. She goes, hey, I had my threesome. Sorry you weren't there to enjoy it. Remember when you were in the hospital? I had my threesome. Dan. Yes. This is the problem, okay? You 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 don't really, I mean, you, to say you're in love with this girl, you know, I mean, hey, you're you're in a great situation to be young and to be with a girl that's also having sex with other girls and you get to do this. But I mean, honestly, she did this. She's bisexual, okay? She's into other women. You're not into other guys. Now, how do you feel about seeing another guy with her? Uh, that's the thing. It, that's what kind of bugs me. That's the You got to tell her. Well, I have, and it's not like she's she's like kept pressing about it. It's I. I have an invention. I feel that. <laughs> <laughs> another Dan, another Adam invention. I don't Hold know on, if Dan. this is going to help you, but I swear to God, this would be a great invention because we get we get ten threesome calls every night, right? And a lot of guys don't want to do this and that. Are you ready for this invention? This is the mother. This is it. <laughs> this is it, Dan. You've 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 heard of all the rest. Now hear the best. I just came up with this. For Drew, you back me up this time. I don't. This is a head that you can strap on your shoulder and an extra penis. That way, your girlie thinks you're with another guy. And you could do like a celebrity, like Kevin Costner or Rosie it's, Greer it's like or something. If you had a guy, usually it would be one guy on one end of the bed and one guy on the other guy. One guy's receiving, one guy's... 
I, I haven't fleshed out all the details yet, Ricky. I'm just off the top of my it's head, but I'm saying yeah. you got an extra but, head but, mounted but you've on already your shoulder. Thought, you've already thought out the fact that Rosie Greer's head is already automated and, and out there somewhere, right? Well, because there was that movie right, where, Rosie a... Greer, where Rosie Greer's head was like stuck on I don't know, Dean Devlin's uh, shoulder or something. I don't remember what the Defiant one or something. I don't remember what movie that was, but the point is right. we put another head, we get a custom turtleneck, and then like an extra penis with a, like a custom pair of slacks with an extra fly. And of course, it. you'd make the other penis really small. Yeah, that's right. right. Really that's small. Right. Perfect. What do you think, Dan? <laughs> yeah, Dan. Dan, don't do anything. What you don't do anything you don't want to do. But you're not. I mean, I'm sorry to say that you're in a real relationship in this. You got. You're in a great sex relationship with a lot of screwing around. Okay. Well. And she and she had fun doing this. And, and and she did these things, but I don't think she did the other girls for you. I mean, was she the one that brought up she wants to do the other girls? Um, or did you bring it up and coerce her into it? It's not that I coerced her into it. At first, it was like I was in, I was in a girl sandwich, and oh. then I went, well, what do you think? And then she's all, well, okay. Well, being the pimento loaf between two beautiful slices of white bread is going to affect any man's decision. Even two really ugly. Even pumpernickel. Yeah. Ooh, pumpernickel on top and why not? Oh, Remember, wait a minute. I had two that. Two fives equal a ten. <laughs> yes. Dan, don't do anything you don't want to do. Good luck. <laughs> Let's talk to Bob from Minnesota. Bob, you're on Loveline. Yeah, this is uh, Bob. My question is for Dr. Drew regarding... Uh, Banking, what does that rank in the list of perversion or perverted yeah, that, sex acts? That rank in the list of perversion. I'm not sure Hold there on, is such let a me mean on a one the, to ten uh, scale, ten being the best. Yeah, I don't know. There's a rank. There's a periodical there. chart here. Yes. Okay. That. It, now wait a minute. This spanking breaks on breaks off into many different factions. Who are you spanking? Are you being well, spanked? I, I, I just have this thought of myself being spanked in a sexual way, and, and I mean I'm. I'm of almost middle age now, and I've never done anything like that or even thought about it until I shot pool in this pool league, and one of the other guys on the other team, his name is Ryan, and every time he, they'd beat us or some other team, he'd stick his butt out and he'd say, somebody spank me. Well, I'm ever, on this since, ever since that me. time, I can't get the idea out of my head. So this was a guy who was suggesting yeah, this. this. Well, but, yeah, but I'm not thinking of him. I mean, it just he put the thoughts. That it's you. Yeah, it's yeah, lucky no. he didn't say somebody ran me in the ass <laughs> yeah, with a pool cue. Yeah, you're probably and right. Then you'd be in big trouble, Bob. Yeah. And let me tell you where that ranks on the chart. That's way down. Bob, I, I don't know that this ranks anywhere, really. I, it's just, it's just, it's, do you think it's a sick idea? No, no that's tough it's, love. There's it's, nothing wrong with that. Some preoccupation. I think your friend was a little weird on the lake <laughs> playing yeah, pool. Bank man. Wait, was he, he was by a lake or he was playing pool? Playing pool. Playing pool, yeah. We were shooting a pool league, yeah. Pool, pool league, league, not pool lake. And every time the guy made a made a good shot, he stuck yeah, his ass out and said, "Somebody spank me." Team, you know, then he'd be, "Hey, somebody spank me." <laughs> and so you sat there and go, no, so "I hope he gets a good shot about, again." About two days later, I'm thinking about this, and I'm thinking, "Geez, that sounds pretty good." Bob, you got a woman? Oh yeah. All right, well, tell her to spank you. Well, I don't know. She got mad the last time I asked her to shave my ass. Uh, Adam can help you with that. Geez. Yeah, <laughs> she there? I could talk some sense into the woman. <laughs> we will be back. Love line will be right back when we're damn good and ready. So you Adam's stupid thing that he brought up has got this this big debate here. You can all join in. We'll make it a mass debate. There was a movie that was made in the 70s. Early 70s. Early 70s. Rosie Greer was a head that was put on this other guy. Big right? black football player from the was Rams. Was put on the, all, on the head of this pro. other guy. Right. I said it was like, not Ray Walson or Halson, but the name was like that. It was like the, the white guy, guy. Yeah, the white guy. You said it was who? I'm going with Robert Culp. No. I, I think it was like the guy that played Perry Mason. Perry Mason? Perry. No, but what was Perry Mason's name? 
Oh, man. Now we're going It was like an older old... guy. He had, like, silver hair and, like, blue eyes. And there was a scene that we can remember with... Maybe it was there... Leslie... Uh, no, 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 Leslie no, Nielsen. No, no, no. Nielsen. But I'm going with the Leslie it's, Nielsen like type. Yeah, yeah, it was like Leslie Nielsen. No. You said a blonde, young He's actor type. He's got blonde. Well, that, that was 25 years ago. Drew saw the movie being made. I was Mason. a kid. I watched a movie. They filmed no, a Ray Halston, Malston. Somebody like that. There was just a scene where they were riding a motorcycle. It was and awesome. Fake head was on his shoulder. And who knows if they had the fake penis in place? You know, while we're on the subject of the seventies, I gotta tell you, VH1 has been doing American bandstands. Have you been seeing it? Yeah. They have been airing all the American bandstands, and and it, some of the funniest stuff I've ever seen. Just to see the clothes and how bad oh, yeah. dressed, and some of the ugliest people I've ever seen. But they had ABBA on. ABBA on. Oh, that must work. have been awesome. I'm telling you, they wore the shortest dress, and during the song, I do, I do, I do, I do. I don't know if her name is like Svergal or something. Snurk. Dude, camel toe. Hardcore. Serious? Oh, my God. This isn't was... one of those fantasies you've cooked up <laughs> no, like I you did with the beginning one. of uh, Three's Company, is name, it? Not Bjorn or something weird like that. Dude, I seen camel toe. Hardcore. She but, had like this ugly t-shirt cut up, and she was singing, I do, I do, I do, and I saw like a little scene. You know what has to be the best part of those reruns is when they have like Norman Greenbaum doing Spirit in the Sky, and then Dick Clark going, well, you're really going places, Norman. I'm sure we're <laughs> going to hear a lot from you in the future. No, Dick was... He was on it. Dick he was, was on, on it. it, and he looked good, looks the same through every year, which everybody knows. Oh yeah, and you may, and you may deal all with these the like devil. stupid seventy things. Remember those little clip on like koala bear things mm-hmm. they used to put on your during the your whole mirror? the whole in Olivia Newton John you know whole sort of Aussie great. invasion and Sluggo or or Jocko was remember Jocko hey. No. Jocko no. was this big guy from, from Perth who came out here and did battery commercials. And he had a TV show for like a year yes, about right. five years ago. That's His right. name was Jocko. That's right. Hey! He didn't That's say anything. Right. He just went, hey! Did he look like one of the bushwhackers? The yeah, like guys? a short, yeah, he had a, a buzz cut and he was a big guy. I sort of remember. Hey! You guys, hey did you, any of you guys figure out who the other person was in that TV show yet? What was it called? Like the man with two heads or something? Crazy. Okay, let's ask our listeners yeah. if they can come up with somebody faxes. So the number's one eight hundred love one nine one. That's five six eight thirty one ninety one. And of course, yes, we are talking about love and relationships and sex and I think a fax weird things you too. did with the New Year's right? Eve. And the fax number is Harry. You just did that because my New Year's resolution was to remember the fax. No, number, so right? I can coach you on it. So three one zero eight five four forty four fifty five. See, see, wow. There you go. And uh, let me read another email. What is autism? Autism. By the way, I love your show. Oh, great. Uh, autism, I, 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 I'm not sure I can define it accurately, but it is a condition where at a young age people lose their relationship with reality. They tend to turn inward. They tend to self-stimulate. They lose the ability to learn, communicate, develop cognitively. And uh, it, it's it's a relative. Of Was a rain man like autistic? Schizophrenia? No, he well. He's an idiot savant. Yeah, it's different. Did, did, what about being retarded? Is that like the generic term? Does that cover no. autism? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Oh, here you go. Oh, well, isn't Ann supposed to look that up? We'll do it. We'll just go along here. Do you want me to do it? Yeah. What is that? Is that a Thanks. list? We got, list we got a big almanac. Right here and do it. You can announce it. <laughs> you, are, you are never going to find True, it. Drew, you're going to be so we'll burnt on this from... one anyway. And you saw the movie being made. Hey, we're going to be back. This is Loveline on Radio Station. Some book with like 10,000 movies in it, and you don't even know what the movie's called. You just know Rosie Greer's head was on it. What? Two head guy. The guy with two heads on one motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> I rented that. That was a Disney movie. Then they had the son of two heads who would go. That's and go. right. And then well, you found one. it already. Oh, oh. Roosevelt Greer, cousin of Pam Greer, makes occasional show with appearances. The, the Thing with Two Heads, yeah. 1972. With? With? Does not so. Oh. Well, we know it's called The Thing with Two Heads. Now look up The Thing with Two Heads, Drew. And in the meantime, we will be talking to Pete from St. Paul. <laughs> Pete, you're on Loveline. Hey, what's going on, guys? That was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not in here. What's up? Did you, hey, uh, you, I got a couple questions to ask you. Yes. Yeah. On New Year's Eve, I uh, kind of got drunk. Oh, my God. You're the only one. I know. And I, uh, I kind of come down from my buzz and everything. My girlfriend gave me a blowjob. I couldn't feel nothing. Anything. Nothing for two hours. <laughs> you don't correct him. I'm saying the word blowjob. And you're just Were you just on alcohol nothing. at that point? Yeah, I was just on alcohol. Well, that that's, can do that. It can? Right. I thought something was wrong with me. No. You just, you, you know, cold weather and too much booze in you and things get a little numb. Was she drunk? No, she wasn't. Because maybe she just passed out on your lap. You don't know. No. Uh, no. Oh. 
I was, I was like, I wasn't even, nothing was wrong with me. I couldn't, I could drive. But, but you had an erection, right? Right. So you could feel enough to kind of get going. Well, yeah, but nothing was happening. Yeah, it must have been you because you were drunk because uh, it always felt good when she used to blow me. Right now, let's go to Chris calling from Tinley Park. Chris, you're on Loveline. How you doing? Good. good. Just want to say, first of all, thank you for having this show because otherwise, I don't know who I'd ask this question. So, all right. Thanks. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm really frightened by those kinds of preambles. No, it's Unless you, hey, wait, wait. First of all, did you see that movie, The Thing with Two Heads? I've heard of it, but I know. It was like a, Ra- not Ray Walston or Halston, but a name like that. I'm going with Robert Culp And the guy still. that played Perry Mason. Yeah, oh, Perry yeah, Mason. I can't believe we can't get the guy who played Perry Mason. Raymond Burr? It or was Raymond that? Burr, I'll bet. No way. No yeah. way. No. It wasn't Raymond Burr, Ironside? Yes. Same guy. He had two heads. No, Perry Mason. It was Ray Halston Malston, somebody. No, Ray Walston no. was the guy. You're thinking my, of my favorite, favorite Martian. It wasn't that guy, but his name sounded like that. Uh, could, could Ray... Okay, go ahead, Chris. <laughs> Anyways, okay, I'm sorry. Um, I've been dating my girlfriend for probably about eight months now, and um, we've been intimate for a while. But lately, um, she's like having trouble with her hygiene, I guess I could say. Do you know what I'm trying to say here? No. Stinky yep. foo-foo? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. That's the medical term, I believe. It's okay. How do I bring this up? I don't want to offend her in any way. Uh, Chris, you got to understand that, that if somebody is having a bad odor like that, it, it is a probability that she, is have, that she has an infection. It's called a vaginitis, usually caused by something called Gardnerella or Trichomonas. And I think you should take it from the standpoint of it being something you're concerned about and you want to help her. And she had a pap smear, those sorts of things. Ask those kinds of questions. And, you know, maybe tell you noticed a discharge or something. You're, or maybe you yourself, maybe you can say you had a little burning after you, after you had sex. You're worried about Did, it. Do you use it in the example like he's, he's with his girlfriend naked in bed? Tell no, us the no, way he would don't say do it. it then. Say it sometime when it's a, a Man, far I'm less... I'm experiencing your discharge. When she's far less vulnerable and is less... And do it from a caring standpoint. The fact is she probably does have an infection and it needs to be treated. I care that you're getting... These sick. days, there are very effective tre- antibiotic creams that can be applied without even the use of oral antibiotics that are good for these kinds of infections. What about typically. douche? It won't do it. It's an infection. Hallmark should come out with some cards <laughs> that say, like, I'm concerned about your funk. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like a picture, you know, like something nice, like a meadow on the you front, you know? No, but, but let me ask you something, Chris. Do you think her habits hygienically have changed? Or that's, Well, see, that's what I'm not sure about. Because no, that was not it. No, it's not it, Drew. No. Drew I love knows. you like a rose. Your gig is irritating my nose. <laughs> how would that one be? That's right. That's okay. perfect. Excellent. All right, how, Chris. About, how about you go to the, the supermarket and you walk through the fish section. You're going, reminds me of last night. How's that? <laughs> that That's so good. subtle. Come on, Adam. You've got to have an invention for this. I, I did. I came up with the Hallmark idea. That, that's my invention. I didn't come up with all the slogans yet, but yeah. I'm working on that. Glade needs to make something for this. No, can she buy the ointment? Stick down. Like no, she needs to see a doctor. And as I said, okay. yeah, you should take it from the standpoint of making sure she's had a recent pap smear and tell that you've noticed, you know, however you want to say it, you know, it's a discharge, you had some symptoms yourself, you didn't notice the smell, that you're worried about her and you want to help her. You reek. All right. Now, if Thank you guys you are having much. sex, I mean, she should be getting pap smears every year anyway, right? Is she seeing a doctor regularly? Uh, I'm not, I think she is, yeah. Okay, it's very important. If, Jiffy I mean, lube. W- women that begin their sexual activity at young age are at higher risk for cervical cancer. Needs to get a pap smear at least every year, all right? But some girls just stink sometimes. It doesn't always mean infection, doesn't it? Like if they run a lot and they don't shower, it can just stink. Yeah, but I mean, it, everybody's got their own thing going uh, on, right, funk Right, wise. right. But some guys dig that stuff. But if it's really something unusual, then it's usually infection. You see, it smells like, like rusty nails. Rusty right. nails. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know what you're talking about. I had a friend describe it once as 7-Eleven burritos. I've never had one of those, <laughs> but a rusty nail I'll go with. <laughs> Kelly from Minnesota. Hi there. How you guys doing? Very good. You like our descriptions? Oh, yeah. It was All funny. right. How do you describe it? Oh, I don't know. K- Kelly, what's going on? Uh, uh, can you I smell your own <laughs> smell ever? What? Do you ever smell your own smell? No. Oh. Even if you stood on one of those uh, subway <laughs> grates in New York like Marilyn Monroe. Kelly, what can we do for you? <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> We're invisible right now, Adam. <laughs> we are. <laughs> you guys are going nuts on that stuff. Um, I was going out with this guy for like two years, okay? And every time his fantasy was to be with another girl. And it just bugged me because that's all he ever talked about. You mean a threesome? Yeah. Okay. That's all he ever talked about. Anytime he saw it on a movie, he's like, oh my God, he went nuts on it, right? 
And now that we broke up, we broke up about a month ago, I've been having these dreams with me and another girl. And I'm going nuts. <laughs> Is he in the dream? Well, no, he's not. So you're just doing a lesbian thing? Yeah. So he, like, planted this seed? <laughs> yeah, and I don't know what's wrong. I mean, I'm like, I've had him, like, almost every night for, like, a couple of weeks. Well, you know... Just about anything that someone talks about enough you can dream about doesn't necessarily mean that that's something you're into. I mean, I will have dreams of the conversation or whatever someone brings up during that day, but this was a month later. So Rosie Greer is going to be in your future tonight. I'm going to have to. I'm going to be sodomized by Rosie Greer tonight. I've got to figure out what that name is. It's driving me crazy. He's going to have your head on his other shoulder, Drew. Ricky's penis. But I've never, never even had these kind of dreams before in my life. I'm just going to have a razor in the other hand. Kelly, <laughs> th- it is normal to have those sorts of things. It doesn't mean you are necessarily developing a homosexual preoccupation. It might, uh, but I I think that it would be unusual for, for a woman not to have occasional thoughts and dreams of this sort. Okay? Okay. Uh, so if it's troubling to you or if it's something you want to act on, no, well, different. I just, I just talked to him tonight about it, and he's going nuts. He's all excited. He's well, like, that's... You uh, let me tell you something. That is Pandora's box. Yeah. You do not tell yeah. your ex boyfriend you've been having dreams about you and another gal on a lesbian scene unless you plan on including him in a real life dream. Well, that's what he said too. I go, I Kelly. Said that you know what that's like, Kelly? That is like if you have a dog. That is like you going for the electric can opener, opening up a can, blowing a bunch of liver scent around the house, and then socking the can away in the fridge. Yeah, but look look at how, how concerned Kelly's ex-boyfriend is for her. He doesn't give a damn about her con- her being disturbed about this and her confusion about it. No, he he just thinks for that. him he's hit the jackpot. The hell with that guy. He's just showing no, his, what he's really No, let me tell you the way about. men work. Oh, his, oh, his, Kelly could have her foot caught in a bear trap. This guy would want a blow job. <laughs> Yeah. It was called The Thing with Two Heads? Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's why you haven't heard from Ricky in 10 minutes. He's got his face buried in a book. Uh, while we're on the subject, Johnny from San Diego, what's up? Hello. Um, I kind of got a question. I, there was a couple months ago, um, some friends of mine got kind of wasted, and the guys that we were with tried to get me and my best friend to sleep together. And I was wondering, what is it about lesbians that just turns guys on so much? It's not necessarily lesbians, okay? Guys love the women, women's bodies, okay? And the idea of seeing two, and also that it's sort of taboo, seeing two beautiful things satisfying each other, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it is. There is the taboo thing, and there's, there's, there's double your fun thing. I mean, they'd like to see one girl masturbate. They'd like to see two girls have sex. They'd like to see three girls have an orgy. You know what I mean? Yeah, I guess. I don't know. It just struck me as weird. Well, guy, guys are weird. Guys are weird, yeah. But, I mean, it, it is it is like a little, there's a little taboo. You know what I'm saying? I, guys are drawn to that. I, I wouldn't, I, I would suggest you not try to figure it out because I'm not sure that there's a, 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 a satisfactory why behind it. Well, and that you me. certainly not give into it just because a bunch of guys think that's a great thing for them. It's but not but let me let me you. just but understand this: these same guys would enjoy watching you have sex with one of the guys. Watching uh-uh, you, uh uh uh. <laughs> a guy that wants to see two girls have sex would also like seeing that same girl have sex with a guy. As opposed to nothing, I'd say definitely. Yeah, you're wrong. Oh, come on. No. You never did one of those things where, like, like when you're younger, up. living Don't. in a park. No, I'm just saying, we kind of peeked around the hall, and your roommate was getting some, and you kind of... But not if it was a girl I liked. I don't like seeing, like... I don't mean, like, your girlfriend you know, or something. I would want to see, like, my friends, like, just bump. Oh, let me... All right, you never did this. I'm yeah. not, uh, Drew, relax over there for a second. But I lived for a while. I lived in an apartment when I was, like, 19, and we lived in a one-bedroom with with two other guys so there's three of us in and one of the guys happened to have a lot of sex met a new woman every weekend and all that kind of stuff and on the weekend if we heard some noise coming from the from the murphy bed in the living room me and the other roommate would like peek our heads around the hall and have a look-see you never did that did it turn you on this is okay (laughs) it wasn't anything wrong on to much more important things joe from san diego you're on love line how you doing good good i just wanted to give you the answer okay i who was closer well, the Ray, you're you're on the right track with the Ray. Ray what? It's Ray Milland. Ray Milland. Oh, see? Okay, Ricky gets it. I uh, see. I told you guys. And doesn't he look sort of like Perry Mason? No. In the old days, he actually did. Yes. See, there you go again. Yes. You can't he, stump me. He, he was also in a lot of movies in the old days, and he was in Frogs, which was another cheap horror. Frogs. <laughs> Frogs. Of course he was. But since I knew it was driving you crazy, I thought I'd give that to you. Joe, we thank you. You know what you won? 
And, but wait, no, what was the movie about now? It's about a guy. But no, Ray Milan was like this racist guy, wasn't yes, he? Yes, it was. He was a racist guy, and then he wound up being on Rosie Greer's body. <laughs> That's, it's an old one. It's not even on videotape. But do you remember that there was a, there was a scene where they were riding a motorcycle? <laughs> yes, I do. With with the with the head sewn on, and it did not look very real. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I, long time ago, but I do remember it. That was good. Let's see. Can we stump Joe? Give Joe, stump Joe right now. That's all right, Joe. Is. Joe, I'm going to stump your ass. Are you ready? <laughs> you ready? There was a TV movie from the mid '70s with Scott Jacoby called Bad Ronald. Do you remember oh, that wow. one? That, and and the, I used to have Ooh. nightmares of that because I remember he killed one girl because she fell and hit her neck on a curb. That's and right. Freak me out. And the guy used to live in this house and he used to look and spy on everybody through the house. His mom died. His mom hid him. Bad Ronald was a troubled teenager. He yes. didn't mean any harm, but he was a geek and everyone made fun of him. And this eight year old blonde girl made fun of his sickly mother, so he shook her and she fell down. She broke her neck. She died. I he used buried to always get her. get scared that, uh, that, I'd get, that I'd get pushed and fall and break hit your my neck. neck on a curb. Now he's snowboarding. The <laughs> point is, is, buried her in a shallow grave. He came back home and his mom said, We got to hide you, Ronald. Hid him under the stairwell, built a little secret room with peepholes and had secret knocks and All kept canned food. There. Then she around. went to the hospital and died. Then a new family moved in. You know who the dad was in the family? Don't. Dabney Coleman. Dabney Coleman. Oh, Joe! <laughs> oh, Joe! Joe, is good. Joe, come over here. I want to blow you. <laughs> Seriously. You're awesome, Joe. Oh, thanks. Wait, go ahead, Drew. What? Was- stump Joe. Anybody want to stump Joe? Joe. Who played George Hamilton's wife in Evil Knievel? Oh, that oh, is a good God. one. That was, what about Viva Knievel? You know, Viva Knievel was starring Evil Knievel. It wasn't as good as Evil Knievel starring George Hamilton. Do you know Speaking the answer? Evil Knievel, did you see his new ad today? Yes, I did for a pizza. Yes, Little well, Caesar, sure. Was, let, let me just give you the moral. You know, I think we're, we're, this show is really interesting we're right now. About moral. four people. I, I want you to know <laughs> the moral. And, and we're three and Joe's the fourth. To bad Ronald. Here's the moral. <laughs> if, if you're a geek, if you're awkward, if you're made fun of, don't worry. You'll do time. <laughs> that was the moral that 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 was the message that Bad Ronald offered to the youth. Joe, I love you. All right, you guys have a good night. Thanks All for right. calling. That was oh, kind of fun. He knew Dabney Coleman was the dad. Wow, awesome. He's good. He's he is. Good. He's better than us. He okay, should own this show, <laughs> as he probably will at one time. Let's speak with Lisa from Diamond Bar. Hello, Lisa. Hi. Hey, did, did you fire off guns in Diamond Bar for New Year's Eve? Uh, no, not really. Just, actually, just your neighbors did, right? <laughs> Um, first of all, Ricky, I just want to say that I have a girlfriend who wants you bad. All right. How big a gal is she? <laughs> um, what? Can, can we one. split her and make two? <laughs> Go ahead. She's from Texas, and when she came down and heard her show, she was just like, I want him. <laughs> hey, everything's big in Texas. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um, God bless Texas. <laughs> first of um, all, I'm nervous here, so bear with me. Um, I was dating someone for about five years, and all along, he had this brother-in-law, and I've always uh, been attracted to him, but nothing ever really came up out of it. Um, he never really even spoke to me, actually. It was just more like I would look at him and admire him, and uh, he's uh, married to my ex-boyfriend's sister, and they have kids, and they've been married for a lot of years, uh. and... Um, <laughs> About a few months ago, uh, we went out for my birthday, all of us, and um, the first time, well, actually, I'd, I had told a mutual friend of ours that I had a crush on him, not knowing that he was going to tell him, and he told him, so I guess it intrigued him, and he wanted to see what, what would happen, so when we all went out, um, it was the first time he ever acknowledged my existence, and we talked, and we danced, and flirted, and it, it became apparent that we were attracted to one another. And um, wait, how old were you when this happened? Twenty-two. And how old is he? Thirty-six. Yeah. Okay. And uh, and so anyway, one thing led to another, and um, it first of all it was just going to start out as just okay, we're going to see each other once a month, and we're and gonna, and he's married with kids. Yes. Oh. And, and he's and okay, but let me put a footnote in here. He's been married to her, and it's it's apparent to everybody and their mother's uncle that it's. It's doomed that, that so, marriage is right, just, right, they right, hate right, each blah, other. Blah, 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 blah. No, honestly, they, they don't get along. I mean, I've been on trips with them, with the family, and we all went away together and things like that. I mean, it's just, they hated each was other. Was she at this function with you yes. when you were dancing with this guy and flirting with this guy? Yes. She didn't right. have an opinion on that? She didn't, she didn't seem say, to jack? Actually, she, told, she asked him, is she turning you on? And he said yes. And she didn't say anything. She just laughed. And um, huh. so, and I, I mean, it was. We were all pretty much intoxicated, so I don't know if she even noticed, but I like 
touched him and everything. I mean, it's like I didn't care that at that point, and I was just going to face consequences. But, you know, she never had a clue. And so now we've been seeing each other for four months, and um, we're pretty serious, and it's it's gotten to the point where we're both in, we're in love with one another, and he wants to leave her, and he's paying my rent, he's paying uh. for all my bills, and I don't do anything. I mean... So I sit at home, not doing anything, because I quit my job that I had for two years. And Why does he have to keep you? What is he in the mafia? <laughs> no, 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 no. He, he, he's. He's just—he's a hard worker. He works a lot. He owns a lot. Of I know, but why can't you be a hard worker? I, I don't oh, understand no, no, no. why he has to set you up. No, no, no. He asked me if that's what I wanted. Now, I, I mean, this is absolutely my choice. He tells me if you want to get a job, whatever you want to do. I mean, he like would give me the world if I asked. But where's your pride? I really, you know, at this point, he told me. He said, "Look, Lizette, I'm going to be working a lot at the beginning of this year. So, if you want to go out and find a business that you want to open, I'll open it for you." He said. So, um, right. All right. No, so, I'm serious. All right. So is right. he going to... All right. All right. All right. So how often do you see this guy? I see him every day. You're his mistress. Basically. He yeah. hates to call it that. But anyway, what I'm... The thing... My problem is right now, I can't seem to get my ex-boyfriend off of my mind. And it's not that I love him because we had a horrible relationship. I mean, it was that relationship. And this is your ex-boyfriend's brother. In no, law. Brother Brother-in-law. In law. Sister's okay. husband. Sister's husband. Ugh. And he he doesn't know where I live now. I didn't give him my number, and the only thing he knows is my voicemail number. And so he leaves messages and calls me all the time. And I feel sorry for him, so I call him back. And then, you know, my boyfriend now, this this guy, he he gets pretty upset because he says, you know, uh, well, because yeah, he doesn't want you running around on it. Like, no, this is going to be on like Carney Wilson's show next it's week. Not or that, like it's not that. It's that he he loves him because he's known him for a lot of years, and he says. I want him to get over you and get on with somebody else before. You, you know what? You know what? I have this overwhelming desire to do. I want to take Lisa and I want to like shake her like an etch a sketch right. and just like start over. You know when you like make a wrong turn right. on an etch a sketch, you oh, just shake yes, it and you yes, just start yes, over yes, again. Yes, yeah. All right, Lisa. First off, don't take this guy's calls. I mean, don't. I mean, I mean the ex-boyfriend. The ex-boyfriend. Yeah. You you have to cut him off. You don't want to set the calendar back to zero like we always talk about. Guys will live off of this much hope. You know what I'm saying? So don't – no contact. Don't return the calls. Nothing with him. Right. Secondly, I don't – look, if you're in love with this guy, you're in love with this guy, fine. But I don't like the part about him, like, setting you up. Right. That sounds a little bad. It sounds like you're getting off on the wrong foot, and it sounds like you have no pride. Well, it's also – it sounds like he needs to be in some kind of control of her. Right. That he needs to keep her kept. And the whole situation is so horribly chaotic. Also know what? that he is going to fool around on you eventually. Uh, uh, evidently. Because it is in his in his makeup. But but what is it with this chaos? I mean, what, what is it in your past or in your past relationships that sets you up for, for this sort of thing? I couldn't tell you. I, I really don't know. I mean, I've never been in a situation like this. You're into drama, aren't you, Lisa? Maybe. You like the danger a little bit, don't you? Maybe. But actually, I'm to the point right now where I'm pretty fed up with him having to go home every night and to his. Uh, <laughs> stop it! You're being an idiot, okay? Forget your ex boyfriend. Forget this guy, okay? This guy is married, he's got kids, and he's cheating on you. And you're being his little, like, whore. That he just pays you, and he'll pay your rent, and all you have to do is bone him, okay? And if you bone him, he will pay you money. He will pay your rent. So you're his little prostitute, okay? You don't want to be with your ex-boyfriend, because what you're doing to this guy is screwed up. Really messed up, okay? You shouldn't be with this guy because you're being a home wrecker. You should start clean slate. It's 1996. Get a brand new guy, Okay? Eventually, no big rush. Right. You're not going to do it because the money's good. No, it's not yeah, that. Yeah, it is. Yeah, he is. You're all the same. No, it's not that. It's that I know he's going to leave her. I know he loves me, and it's just a matter of time. And Where is he right now? Where is he right now? At home. When, when was the first time you had sex with him? Uh, first time? Like the date? When was the very first time he told you he was going to leave his wife? Oh, not until like... Two months after we were... And how long ago was that? Two months ago. He is two months. He's still not going to leave his wife, okay? Then you say, if you're going to... Hey, hey, shut up. If he's going to leave his wife, then you say, if you really leave your wife, 
I mean, he's I'm, got kids. If you leave your wife, you call me once you've done right. it. But you know what? Then, then let him take care of his relationship. You're wasting your time and you're wasting his. And maybe he could work on this relationship, which he has kids, but he knows that he's got this chick that he pays for that's just sitting on hold. Forget it. It's done, Lisa, okay? All right. Now you're going to tell your friend from Texas I'm a prick, huh? Exactly. <laughs> Love Line will be right back to say something interesting or humorous or something. Welcome back to the show. I, I read a fax uh, about the one that said it was a girl that started her own, like, she's just a fan of Loveline. Well, right. she's a he, so I apologize. <laughs> and if you want to, and it's, it, this person's a big-time Loveline fan. They're on AOL. It's N-O-L-V-C-H-E-R-U-B. And said, uh, thank you for plugging Loveline Club on AOL. You said that you thought I was a girl. Oh, my God. Do you know that you're AOL? Um... I have a tape of the last love line of 1994. Wow. And you guys were using a Magic 8-Ball, which was cool. You asked the 8-Ball if love line was going to get syndicated in 95, and it said, Not my answer is no. Guess it was wrong. Huh. Barry in L.A. Thank you, Barry. See, those things aren't real. Just thought I'd tell you that. You don't believe in the Magic 8-Ball? I don't believe in the What about the mood ring? Tell me that that's not science. Don't believe in the magic eight ball. Don't believe in mood rings. And, I, and I'm more and more, I'm starting to not believe in those psychics. But what about just plain, like, bad karma and bad timing? Let me, I tell, you, let me tell you just a very brief story today. Today, I was moving. A, I, I, I have the most anal landlords in the world. I mean, seriously, like, if I hang a picture and bang in a nail, they'll come knocking on the door and want to know what's going on in there. And today, I popped a couple doors off the hinges. My apartment has, like, extra doors that get in the way of stuff and just, like, the hallway. So I popped them off the hinges, and I said, I'm putting them out in my storage area, which is, like, a mile down the road. And I said, if these guys see me carrying these doors out, they're going to pitch a fit. And this is the middle of the day. This is noon, and I go out to the parking lot. Their car's not there. No one's around. The building is empty. It's the middle of the day. I actually run down the hall, throw it in the elevator. I only have to go down one flight into the basement to throw it in the back of the car. The door opens. The manager's standing there. (laughs) Hi, what's going on? (laughs) Nothing. Where are you going? Nowhere. <laughs> yeah, why why's the, the door with you? And I thought to myself, I, I really said, I figured out I had about a one minute window. This guy has gone the whole morning. One minute. <laughs> one freaking minute. And this guy, the door opens and he's standing there. And I thought to myself, what did I do? I want to hear what the answer is. And he said, Where, why is the door with you? I was like, uh, 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 I'm just going to go uh, move it into my store. Oh, you are, huh? I don't think that's a good idea. Oh. Yes, and and it ended. And up- he went upstairs. You know who was waiting at his door? Ray Milan. Ray Milan. Ray Milan. What is it? His front door. We're gonna go back to some calls right now. This is Allison from Minnesota. Hey, Allison. Hi, guys. Happy hey. New Year. Yeah, you too. Hey, did you, did you make any New Year's resolutions? <laughs> no, I made a resolution like when I was twelve, never to make those things. When you were twelve? <laughs> I don't know. When I was a kid, I thought oh, I'm done with these resolutions. Okay. So I don't make them anymore. Thank you for sharing. Now, what's up? Hey, um, I'm calling in because I have an answer to like a pretty burning question here going on tonight. Um, I think I, I have an opinion about why threesomes are so like so much of a turn on. The idea of two girls having sex with one guy, because the idea of like two guys with me or having sex just in front of me turns me on so much it's insane. And it's, you like the idea of two guys? Oh, I love it. Now, would you want those guys to like touch each other and stuff? Sure, I mean, if they wanted to, but just just imagining it, you know? You imagining like, it right now? What? You imagining it right now? No, oh. I'm not. What I'm imagining is, well, my my current lover, when I told him that, kissed his best friend in front of me, and they're both really straight, but they did it just to turn me on. They're it's fruity. Insane. They're not really straight. They're fruity. What? They're fruity. <laughs> they're fruity? They are. Oh, yeah. But you know what? I think if you asked, if you took like a thousand... on the cheek, and I said that wouldn't do it for me. And they had to kiss on the lips, and they did that. I would bet, Allison, if you took a thousand guys and a thousand girls, okay? Uh-huh. You asked a thousand guys, would you let? Which would you rather see, two women or two men? The guys would say two women. If you asked a thousand girls, would you rather see two women or two men? I bet most of the girls would say they'd rather see two women. 
Yeah. I, I don't think so. Because, no, I, I do. I mean, what are you attracted to? You, I'm attracted to men and male bodies and male sexuality. This idea of two guys in front of me. Okay, really do you think... It turns me on because it's twice as nice. But, but having girl, sex I mean, with each other? I don't want her in the picture. She's competition. Yeah, but what you, you would want these two guys to have sex with each other in front of you? No, I'd be more turned on if they're both paying attention to me. Right, right. That's what Ricky's saying. It, it, it doesn't, it's not a, a cross, it doesn't make the translation. Guys want to see women having sex together, and women want to see women ha- having sex together. Well, God bless them. Sex, that would turn me on, too, but... All right, well, look, if a guy's nuts was hanging out of his gym shorts, you'd get turned on, Allison. I mean, that's the way no, you are. I wouldn't. I'm not into that type of guy. Even if the bubble gum was stuck to the side of <laughs> She's one of the ones. Hey, I that, sat in gum. She's one of the ones that got some of the stuff away from other ones, right? Is that how it works? Yeah, she got the extra sex. Right. Her sister's cold as eyes. Hey, Heather. Hi. You're on Loveline. Thank you. Um, I am five months pregnant, and I found some pictures out of a Playboy magazine under our mattress, my boyfriend and I. And I know that it's like a normal guy thing. It's a curiosity thing. But the fact is, is that he hid it from me. And like all his friends knew that the pictures are here. And I didn't know. And I feel really down on myself because my body is getting distorted. I don't feel sexy. I don't feel attractive. Right. And I want to attract him. And you understand only that, to me, you know that's right. that's the thing I want. He- Heather, you understand that his looking at those pictures doesn't mean he's any less attracted to you, or you understand that? Yeah, I know, but that's just the, I'm having trouble dealing uh, okay. with my feelings. And do you me. also understand how normal your feelings are for a pregnant woman? That both during, after pregnancy, that to have all kinds of doubts insecurities, uh, all kinds of things. Your body's going through some of these tremendous un- changes. And most women feel very insecure and very uncertain of what's going to happen to the future, that their ability to remain attractive to their husband or boyfriend is going to be maintained. These are completely normal things. And I would express them to your boyfriend, and hopefully he can reassure you. Yeah, we've talked and everything, but, I mean, when before I got pregnant, my waist used to be 25 inches. I mean, I'm a little person. Right. And I see these pictures, and I see what he's looking at. And, you know, I know what he's thinking, and I want him to think. Wait, Heather, what do you think he's, Heather, what do you think he's thinking? Well, just that she's attractive and that she's hot. Do you think it's possible? You know, she's got all the right curves in all the right places, and I don't anymore. Do you think it's possible he was looking at those pictures even before you were pregnant? No. He was? No, because I know... I'm, there's more to the story, and I'm not just dragging it all out for you guys. I Tell know us. when he got the pictures, and... Um, Heather, guys will continue doing that no matter what. Whether oh, you're I pregnant know. or not pregnant. I know, but I just don't know how to make myself yeah, feel. The problem is now, right? The problem is now you're feeling insecure because you you don't look the way they do all of a sudden right. for the first time. I mean, but we you, we have an open relationship. Heather, you will again. Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean you have an open relationship? We've looked at magazines like that together before. I mean, but I'm, not an open relationship. You don't have other partners, right? Oh no. Okay. No, I mean we've we've talked about. Um, other women and other things, and we're really open, and that's why it also hurts that he was hiding it from me. Wow. Well, I've looked at, I've looked through. He's the hiding it because he was af- before, he was afraid it would make you. Feel, I, I'm sure he had a sense that you'd feel insecure at this point. He was probably just trying to spare you of that. And it's it's not really hiding. It's almost like I, I would want I would I would ask the female listeners to look at it this way. It's like you keep milk in the fridge. You know what I'm saying? You keep oh crackers God. in the cupboard. You porno you keep no, under the mattress. It's almost a place that you put it. You know well, what I mean? I you just put it there. But in fact, that's didn't, just you it. stash didn't it you just in a place. A girl to look? I told like the girl to go on a scout. Hold on, hold yes. On. What, what, Heather? If I would have known that they were here, it would be different. Because, like I said, you know, we've looked at them together. Uh, Heather, I, no, Heather, that's deal. that's not true. You still would have been terribly disturbed about it and insecure, and you would have been angry with him. I mean, that's a natural way to feel, and that's the way you would feel. Let's face it. I mean, that, that when you're going through changes like you're going through, you would be feeling insecure even if you didn't know that he was looking at pictures. But if you saw him look askew at somebody, it would make you feel terribly insecure in the way you're feeling right now. When you ha- How far along are you in the pregnancy? I'm um, five and a half probably. Months. Five, six, yeah, months. So in a couple months, it's going to be over. 
you're going to regain oh, your that. you're going to regain mean, your I, old body and you're going to have a new priority in your life and that's going to be the child and these and he's these things, still going to be looking at magazines because he probably was before and, and these things are going to seem a lot less important to you what what, what are you guys going to get married mm-hmm. you, when I'm not sure when I mean not immediately I, I would suspect we will and, be together and again I, the, the, I'm terribly confused by the, the order of things these days it's have the baby first then fall in love then get married it, it, uh, no it, it wasn't accident I, 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 mean, I understand do happen I, I understand but I, I would think you would feel a lot better if you had the security of a commitment from him a formal commitment and that may sort of seal things for you if you knew that that, that was in the in the in the making for well, you well see I'm not worried about him cheating on me or any of that I'm just, does your dad have a shotgun yeah. All right then. Load it up. Load it up. <laughs> Just rock salt for the in the first in the chamber, okay? Sure. All right. I think she liked me. I'm gonna go to some commercials, and when we come back, commercials already. It's a minute early. Well, just because Lori's talking to somebody, and I, I can tell it's going to be a good call. She seems excited. I think it's her dad. Oh. <laughs> Love line. Look deep into this jingle. You are getting sleepy. Sleepy. Love line will be right back. You will listen. You will listen. Is this a taste of how Loveline's going to be in 96? We're talking about threesomes and this girl sleeping with her boyfriend's brother. And and during the commercial breaks, we're trying to stump each other with 70s trivia. It, so, so if you have, hey, if you've got a love problem or question, or you've got some... Drew will be the subject. You, your, your forte will be what? What? 70s sitcoms? And, and cartoons. I'll sure. be like crappy new wave songs or 70s songs. All seventy songs. Yeah, that is that is uh, seventy songs. Oh, you know, I I would be good. I can help at seventy songs, but I'll go with uh, I'll go with I'll go with seven. I'll go with TV movies from the seventies. Okay, so stump us. (laughs) <laughs> or yeah. ask us why you have a stump. Killdozer, possibly the greatest TV movie ever made. Killdo- Killdozer, about a bulldozer that got upset. You know, now every TV movie is like, not without my breast, or for the love of the child. or You know, everything's about, you know, Meredith Baxter burning the role of a lifetime because her kid gets taken away by Arabs and she has to go undercover. And all. In the old days, it just used to be a piece of farm equipment got <laughs> got possessed. There's one, the car. A car just chased yeah, people. Yeah, a car just chased people around for two hours. Well, there's so. a good trivia question. What? The J- Jerry Van Dyke's first television show. The Car. My Mother, The Car. My Mother, The Car. <laughs> Killdozer. Still the Anybody band. with the name Dyke and is a good, good in my too. opinion. Let's speak to uh, Jody, who's gone from Fallbrook. What's up? Oh. All right. She just wanted to say, hey, you guys are doing a great job. This is <laughs> Olivia from River Forest. Olivia's 19, and you're on Loveline. Hi, Ricky. Hi, Adam. Hi, Drew. Olivia. Uh-huh. Um, I was just wondering, um, well... Sometimes I orgasm when I'm working out at the health club, and I was just wondering if this is if this is common and what. Where and when, where and when are you going to be working out next? Did you hear that call we had earlier from uh, what was her name? Angela from she was she was I having orgasm so. anyway. She was having the same kinds of now, problem. You don't have some instructor having sex with you right no. there in front of everyone. This is those, on your own, right? Do you do those leg yeah. spread? Do you do That's those leg spread thinking. exercises? Well, it's like leg lift. No, but you do you do the things where you just spread your legs. No. Huh. You know the machine Ricky's talking about, though. Yeah, the yeah. Inner, the inner thigh. <laughs> you know, a guy invented it. It doesn't do a damn thing. Guys invented it just to see chicks do that. Yeah. Machine. Right, just to help enrollment. If I did that, my nuts would fly off and ricochet <laughs> and, like, put out a speaker or something. I mean, could you imagine doing that, Ricky? No. Guys never do that. Well, not now. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what machine are you on when you orgasm? It's just where you, you put your elbows on, on it and lift your legs up. Oh, oh, yeah, like the stomach cruncher thing. Yeah, you hop yeah. up on it a little bit. Right. It, it's like a gymnast hey, thing. Whatever type of motivational thing you need to get you working out, at least you're working out, right? Yeah, yeah. So it what's wrong help. with that? <laughs> but I was just wondering what causes this. And, like, does it's, it stretch something? or n- No, it's or just... Or does this happen to a lot of people? Because it's not something you really talk about. But And yeah. saying, yes, it does happen. I know exactly which one she's talking about. Which, which machine or which it's kind? It's the one that you jump on and you hold your elbows and you grasp those things and lift your yeah. legs up. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're not supported except by your arms. Yeah, right. it's for your abs. 
And I've right. talked to women about that specific one. And really? Something that it does. Really? Yeah. yeah. Seriously. Every time I work out, I want to throw up. Wow. Yeah, see, I, I like pulled a muscle masturbating and couldn't yeah, work yeah. out. It doesn't have any weights on it at no, all, right? You, right? you rest your forearms on I it. I was explaining this 10 minutes ago. You know when you, you know parallel bars yes. that a gymnast yeah. would use? Right. Hop up on the parallel bars, put your elbows and forearms down on the parallel bars, so and you're bring hanging. your knees up to your chest and yeah. work your abdomen. Right. right. What, I get a chalkboard out? You know what I'm talking about, yeah, right? I, I just, but, but she's talking about the one where you have your elbows hooked in. No! No, no. No, no. 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 Right, Anne right. is up in a linebacker stance having an orgasm in the next room. It's fantastic. <laughs> but why is that? Yeah. Uh, it, 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 for whatever reason, stimulates the, the right area. But you must have abs of steel, right, Olivia? Yeah, I do. Right on. Now, you can, so you will have an orgasm. Yeah. And how long, how many reps before the average um, orgasm? The first time it takes about 15 to 20 reps. And then after that, it could be like five. Really? Yeah. I've never did do you, 15, do you, 20 reps in my whole life on the Are you, you, yeah. you kind of like, do you keep it under control? I mean, are you... you yeah, I, mean? I don't think anybody else can tell. But wow. I try not to, you know. Yeah, I got to go start hanging. I got to stake out. Would it be okay if I just pulled a folding chair out and like put a cooler beer there and just sat there with like one of those hats that holds the beer can? Eating pretzels. And like a hockey jersey. Hey, Ricky, a a girl's getting on that leg machine again. I'm like, all right, Adam. With a cigar. Think she's going to come? Sometimes people wonder why I'm on it so much. (laughs) Or or why you've gotten a free membership at your gym for six years. Thanks for calling, Olivia. Well, thanks. I'm going to read an email. This is kind of a nice, innocent little one. Remember, we're still up for those trivia stumpers. Uh, Hi, I listen to your show all the time. I'm a 14-year-old freshman in Colorado. At my school, I fell in love with a girl my age and my grade. And I've told her I like her and I've danced with her, but I still don't know if she likes me. But there's a girl who's also 14. She's a French model and a millionaire. She's in seventh grade because of her modeling career, but she's in love with me. I have some feelings towards her, but nothing compared to the girl in my grade. I know you may think I'm a little young, but I would really like some sort of help with a relationship with one of them. All right, this is a guy. Yeah. And he, he told this girl he liked her, and she didn't really respond. Right. And this other one is this French model. Millionaire chick. That sounds... A- you need another extra sketch with this guy, right? Yeah. Just you're, to smack him around and say... Yeah. Because you know, as soon as he goes for the model chick, you know, the other girl will probably also like him. Yeah, but if you tell someone you like them and you don't know they like you, then that means they probably don't like you because they right. probably would have said something. That's I right. say you talk to this one one more time and then go after Gigi. John from Minnesota, you're on Loveline. Hi. Hey, guys, what's up? Nice. How you doing, John? Uh, Thanks for sharing. <laughs> this is, like, first time I called this, but uh, I was just uh, wondering if it was unusual to, like, have shakes when you're having sex with a girl. You know, like your whole body shakes. You're supposed to move. Well, no, no, it's not. It's not the gyrating movement. Like a seizure. Well, no, it's just like she didn't shove her wallet in your mouth, did she? (laughs) No, I, I just like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, all right. Let let me explain what happens. I'll tell you what happens. You. You lock your legs out for a prolonged period of time. See, here's the thing about sex that people don't realize. You could have uh, one of those fireplace pokers six inches in your abdomen, and you might not know it for like 20 minutes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why rug burns. You know, your legs are all right. bleeding, but you're still boning away because right. you're just having sex. People actually have to have grafts onto their knees and stuff. And you're, like, you point, and you go, what happened to you? You fall off a motorcycle? Like, uh-huh. Oh, oh no, I was having sex. <laughs> like half your knee is on the carpet. It just hurts all stop. You just right. keep on going. Right. So you lock your body out like like it's a two by four, right? And your calves cramp up and all that. And then all of a sudden you start shaking because you've been doing something. Your your pain, Doc, help explain this. The, the, the well, pain center in your head has been turned off by the by the sperm center in your nuts. Am I right? <laughs> That sounds really strange. Yeah, that would be a strange explanation. But I, I think that there are many reasons that people could shake. Is it after orgasm you're talking about? Well, no. It, well, see, it might be that uh, I'm holding myself up. Cause right. So you shake cause, because crazy. of muscular exertion. Yeah, like when you hold your arms up and, and that, you're doing a lot of push-ups, right. you start and to shake. That's right. And that would be normal. But All of it could be normal. Even after, you know, after I let myself down, you know, I'm calming down. And, again, you, your muscles will shake and uh, for a while after exertion. So that, that's all normal. It's all good. Well, that's cool. All yeah. Right. Well, I was just wondering, you know. I also got another thing, but if uh, you got time. No, we don't. 
All right, that's cool. But thanks. John. That's why uh, porn stars always have big forearms. You ever notice that porn stars always have big veins and stuff in their forearms because it's like they're they're supporting eighty percent of their body weight with their forearms on. You never notice that? I'm not looking at the forearms. Oh, really? Let's talk to Bill <laughs> from Minnesota. Bill, you're on Love Line. Hey, hey, Ricky. Hey, hi, um, hi, hey, Bill. Hey. How you doing? Good. Well, I got a problem. I've been see, I've been with my girlfriend for two years, and I just have I have this growth. It's it's almost like a it started out like a pimple, right? And now it's just kind of grown into it's a little larger, like a like a cyst. I don't know what it is. It's not it, it's not like it's it's harder than a cyst. Carbuncle. Is, is it in the skin or is it in the testicle? It's, it's a rosy uh, greer's growing. Well, it's more like in the skin. Yeah. Does it have an afro and do needlepoint? <laughs> what's the question? What is it, it? Well, I was wondering what's the best way to get it removed. I've had options. Um, whether it's laser surgery or, jeez, I don't even know. That's uh, the that's toenail clippers. <laughs> toenail clippers. That would, that would what what, what ways point. have been suggested to you? What's that? What ways have been suggested other than laser to you? Um, they, I think the, they had one that had to do with uh, cutting off and having skin grafts. Oh, it's that big. <laughs> yeah. And um, I don't know. I just want to know. I would do the simplest way possible. I don't think you need to worry so much about cosmetics. Uh, you know, once it's off, I think you'll be happy. But whatever is the simplest, if they uh, can do it with liquid nitrogen, if they can do it with laser, whatever they can do that avoids much surgery, do get that. your girlfriend to bite it off. No, 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 no. no. It sounds <laughs> like it's bigger. Than hurt that. a little more in surgery, I think. Yeah. Now, they didn't say it has to come off, did they? No, not yet. They're they're not quite sure. They said it's 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 almost like a birthmark. Right. It's, it's kind of got a like a light bluish color to it. Hmm. Is it in the shape of a blank hen? Do, do they think <laughs> it's, it's uh, what, it might grow? Who knows? It is what we call hemangioma. Have they use that term at all? Um, like it's like a cluster of blood vessels in there. No, I'm not sure. I, I've been meaning to go to different doctors get some other opinions, but I've been going to my family doctor, and it's well, you ought to go to a dermatologist or a plastic surgeon. Dermatologist. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Good luck. Thanks. Bye. Hello. This is my dog. His name's Dave. Say, say, say. Roll over. Roll, roll. Welcome back to Love Line. I don't know how we got on the idea. If you have any 70s trivia you want to stump us since we've only got about five minutes left, and Adam's doing movies, and Drew will do TV shows, and I'll do, uh, I don't know, weird You'll songs. do music. Skateboard trivia, any 70s skateboard trivia. I'm big on my 70s skateboard trivia. We got Chad from Arvada, Colorado on Love Line. Chad, you're on Love Line. Hey, it's Arvada, Colorado. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, I got, I got a movie from the 70s, like the early 70s. I don't know what the name is, but it's this really cool movie, and there's this really wicked chase scene in it. <laughs> Bullet. <laughs> Anything Ron Howard was in before no, 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 1977. No, no, no. No, no. It was Bullet. It was Steve McQueen, and he drove yeah. a, right. in San Francisco. a Mustang. Yeah. I think it was a Boss 302. In San Could have been like the 70 Plymouth Superbird and this oh, little red favorite. gremlin. Oh, that's my favorite. And this uh, like old Dodge cop car. Could have been Seven Ups. Remember that movie? Yeah. No, no. It was about this guy. French Connection. No. French Connection. No, he you know, like, it was, va- was it Vanished? Did he run into a bulldozer at the end? It must Vanishing think. Point. The guy Vanishing was all point. beaked up yes. on speed the right. whole movie. No, Eat My like, Dust. Oh, yes, it was. You're wrong. Gone in 60 seconds. What, what, movie, what movie did Vanishing Point play with, typically? Ah. When on, they, used to, they used to have double features back then. Damnation now. Alley. No. What? Butch Cassidy. Oh, you oh really? Play with Butch Cassidy. I thought it was like Steve McQueen movie. I thought you were right with that. But I got a question for you. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, you know who Mark Hamill is, right? Yes. Right. Okay, what was his second movie? Corvette Summer. Oh, I am so impressed. <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! I was four when that came out. <laughs> that was the good days You're when they made movies about cars. Four. Remember the what van? Was that, Dan? It said you're older than I am. You were not four when that came out. Ah, oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you're 14. I'm a Chevy man. I'm a Chevy man. That's why I knew that one. <laughs> Remember the van? What? Yeah, the van with the Vanessa. And Danny was Danny Bonaducci in that movie? I think he was, but it used to be the old days when something got hot, they just made a movie about it. Like when CBs were hot, they made a movie, they made Convoy. Convoy. When vans were hot, they made a movie called The Van. The whole movie's just about vans. Car washes were hot. Car wash? 
Okay, let's go to uh, Aldo from Ontario. Ooh, I, didn't watch. I don't know why, but I'm ha- I, I'm having fun. Aldo, you're on Love Line. Yeah, first of all, I want to say you guys' show is all right. But like, even if we're doing this stuff for the fat past four minutes, yeah, I liked it. Okay, what kind of car was on the Dukes of Hazard? That was a uh, that was a Challenger. That was a Dodge Charger. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, that, that, the seventy. That, that was like the best muscle car. What was it? What was the name of it? What's the generally? It had a zero one on it, a Confederate flag on the. What's the name? Barbara uh, uh, Mandrell. No, no, the, the girl that played Daisy. That's what I was about Bar- to ask. Uh, Barbara Bach. Barbara, Barbara Bach. Bach. Yeah. On this show she came time. in and she signed my Dukes of Hazard right. lunchbox right. when she was our guest. Hey, I'm just thinking, as you guys know, that you must have no life. <laughs> what? <laughs> we, we didn't used to have a life. Aldo. Hey, masturbation's a life. <laughs> Aldo, how many times have you been trying to call to ask us that stupid question? Too many. Okay, I mean, who's got the life? Oh, yeah, you got me. <laughs> hey, happy, happy New Year, bro. You too. This is kind of fun. We got two more minutes, so we try to see if we got another one. And we're like a tour de force, the three of us. Oh, I mean, the it, three of us together cannot be stopped. a game show, the three of us. I mean, come on. We have gotten everyone people have given us. Nauseating 70s questions for a thousand. Dude, you got to watch American Bandstand with it on. It, it really, it, really, it, really, when is it, that on? You want to plug that? It's, no. It really, it's obnoxious no, trivia, too, you know, the 70s trivia. Just, it was just a, an irritating time of history. Do you think we could do a show now with a Confederate flag on the roof of a car? Mm-mm. No, because no, Gen- Dukes of Hazard was the ultimate in white trash. And Dukes of Hazard was like number one for a while. Can so you believe long. a show that bad would make it? To- I mean, now number one, you got to beat ER, or you got to beat Seinfeld. Then Dukes of Hazard with Boss Hogg and Enos, <laughs> <laughs> and that grandpa was having sex. You're with on Love Line. What's your name? Hello, Josh. He's not on hold yet. Oh, what do I do? Oh, hold- go ahead, Lori. Just punch him through. We've only got time for this last there one. You go. Josh, you're the last call tonight. What's up? Hey, um, okay, I want to know who the voice of Shaggy from Scooby Doo was. Oh, come on, Adam. <laughs> it was Adam. No, who? Shaggy's the guy. The guy. The the, uh, oh, with the t-shirt. Like, oh, he went like yeah. He yeah. was pothead. Like, huh? Yeah, pothead. Yeah, right. He was a pothead. Right. Yeah, he was like the original. Those stoner. guys were all like ravers. He was kind of like Bob. Well, remember Bob Denver's character in Dobie Gillis? Yeah. yeah, yeah. He was like a beatnik. Yeah. Yeah. yeah who was that guy? I don't know. I stumped you? Yeah. Casey Kasem. Casey Kasem. Oh, that's yeah. right. I was close. Look, uh, everybody's looking at me like I know. Ann no, told that me is in right. my ear. Ann told me in my ear. And I think the re- Did you know that, Ann? I think the reason they know that is Casey Kasem uses the same studio, doesn't he? Yeah. He does? Casey Kasem, does he sit in the chair that I'm sitting in right now? I, I don't know. Hold I on. couldn't tell you. No, he, he was asking an engineer. Yeah, well. Yeah, he, yeah that's, I, I had heard that before, Josh. I, it just slipped my mind. I apologize to the listeners, to the fans. Thanks, Josh. Okay, thank yeah. you. <laughs> Ow, what kind of oh, wait a minute. Here, I got a, I got a quick one. Yeah. Who, in Josie and the Pussycats, right. uh, one of the Pussycats. Meryl Streep. No, uh, Cheryl, Cheryl Ladd. Yep. Hold on. Casey Kasem sits in this chair I sit in right now. I'm going to leave something for Casey. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Can we get going, guys? Yes. Thank you for being part of tonight's Love Line. We'll be back tomorrow. And want to thank Lori for answering the phones. She did it all by herself tonight. Fine job. First, we just, we just, she did a great job. She had all the lines lit up, and then there's 10 minutes. I was like, hey, clear out lines. Let's just get 70s trivia. I think you yelling at her before the show really worked. We want some trivia. Welcome back in. Sorry about the Chargers. Please join us tomorrow for more Love Line. On behalf of myself, I'm Ricky Rackman. I'm Dr. Drew. And I'm Adam Carolla. Bye. You have been listening to Love Line. The opinions expressed by Ricky Rackman, Dr. Drew, Adam Carolla, or anybody else on this program are not necessarily anyone's. Love Line producer, Ann Wilkins.